Good morning ladies and gentlemen, I'm Mizi69, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to have a look at the STB-1. It is the Japanese medium tank. Um, it's a fantastic tank. Um, actually, those of you that don't know, uh, I have some history with, with the STB-1. I have some uh, very bad history with this tank right here. So... Back when I set myself the target of acing every single tank in the game, or as many tanks as I possibly can ace, the STB-1, um, yeah, I suffered with the STB-1. And this was the time where Wargaming, uh, not the military honour, I can't even remember what it is, where you, uh, if you have a good game, you get a certain reward. I, th I can't remember what it's called. I can't remember. Um, but when Wargaming introduced this to the game, you would actually get more points uh, if you had a good game on a loss than you would on a win. So pretty much acing tanks on a win was almost in impossible. Um, you had to lose and pretty much have a good game to lose. Now, I could not ace the STB. It took me over 850 battles to ace this tank. I was getting 6k. I was almost getting 7k. And it was only enough for uh, a first class. If you look back at my previous STB1 videos, you will, uh, you will see this. And especially my old ones where I was getting sort of 6.5k and it was only a first class. I was getting so frustrated with the tank. Um, and then I finally get the ace and it was more frustrating because I got the ace on about 4k damage and I was like really it took me 850 battles to 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 get that ace it was one of the most frustrating tanks um, ever all my close friends know how frustrated I was with this STB it got to the point where I was like you know what I'm just gonna freaking give up um, and it also got to the point where I sold the tank just to rebuy it again um, because my my luck on the tank was not was not great. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to sell it and then rebuy it. Um, maybe maybe my luck may change, and it did. I've aced it a few times now, and it's not it's it's still a difficult tank to ace. But most tier tens are actually difficult tanks to to ace now. There's a few obviously easy ones, um, but the STB. It hasn't got the DPM as the uh, or the Russians like the 3.5. It's got around about 3.2k damage, uh, but the the view range is really good. The gun depression is really good, and the turret the turret on this tank is absolutely uh, amazing. And if you watch Wargaming's video where they done the top five tanks, it, top five tier ten tanks that win, um, they actually added the STB into that because of the the gun depression it's got 10 degrees i think and then the amazing turret that it's got as well uh, you need this is a ridgeline tank just like that there's a few ridgeline tanks you've got the pattern um and obviously you've got the t62a uh, with the gun depression it's got now and, and the turret um but this is definitely a ridgeline tank you need to get this tank on a ridgeline um once you got it on a ridgeline use that amazing turret it's got use the 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 armor of that thing uh, we're going to show you the armor in in just a, a short minute um and the dpm the dpm is good the speed's good and not only that but it's one of the sexiest looking tanks in the game this tank looks so sexy if i was a woman tank i would i would definitely want to marry the stb1 definitely um, because the STB-1, I mean, just look how beautiful the tank is. Um, definitely one of the sexiest tanks in, in the game. It, it, looks, it just oh, mwah, looks amazing. Um, other than that, it's, it is a great tank. Obviously, other than the, the turret, you don't have much armor. Uh, Wargaming have actually buffed the armor. Um, so it used to be really easy to, to HE on the sides. Um, Wargaming quite a few updates ago now, that they, they did buff that, so it's not as easy to, to HE an STB-1 on the sides. Of course, if you uh, if you have a Death Star, 
um, yeah, they can, of course, they can HE you. Um, the penetration, I think, is you, you do struggle slightly on the penetration sometimes. Uh, so maybe you might want to think about running the uh, the calibrated shells. It does have heat, so it will um, pay off if you do run the calibrated shells. But of course, if you do run calibrated shells on the tank, you will start losing your DPM. Um, but you can see here, I'm on a ridge. I'm playing on the ridge, and I don't want to attack these guys. I'm happy on the ridge here. Um, I am getting penned from the, the Conqueror, and I've actually wasted quite a few shots trying to pen that uh, Conqueror when he's in a hold down position as well. Uh, he does have some weak points on, on the tank, um, but yeah, we've we missed quite a, quite a few of them. Now, the turret, you can get up to sort of the effective armor on the turret is just like, you can get it up to sort of 400 millimeters, depending on your angles. Um, but flat, it's about three, 370, 380 effective armor. Um, yeah, it's it really is a strong, strong tank. And if you can get yourself into that position, then you will have a good game. We are gonna, I'm gonna, gonna show you uh, the armor profile in, in a second. So you can, if you use this as a ridgeline tank, you can pump out that damage really, really quickly, and you can actually get quite a few bounces. Now, it's not a, it's not a tank known for for making credits, so yeah, you're not going to make too much credits uh, with the tank. Now, we're going to watch one more game, um, but before that, this is the uh, armor profile. You can see just the turret, it, um, 380 mil. That's flat, either side of the gun. You do have spaced armor in in the. I mean, it's like the the mantle is pretty much in, impenetrable, so you can't. Um, you can't pen that and either side of the gun you're looking at 380 millimeters effective and that is looking at the tank flat um, so yeah of course if you start using that gun depression the 10 degrees of gun depression i think that it's got then yeah you will uh, you can just see how amazing the uh, the turret can be um, but you don't want to overextend you don't want to overextend on the ridge because your hull you've literally got no armor on your hull a anything can go through your your hull um so we're going to watch this battle now by Jacob from uh, from a, a really good clan of, of mine, of good friends of mine. And he's going to get into this position. You can see it's only a little ridge in front of him, but it's enough. It's enough to just sort of hold the team back. He does get penned from that 50B there. Um, but he's not looking at run away. He's looking at just staying. He's looking at fighting. And you can see there he does get that bounce from the Vickers Light. Uh, so... If you look at also it look uh, if you look at the mini map, he does have a fosh with him, which is great to have something like a fosh um, and big massive TD that could deal a lot of damage, um, protecting you as you are you are the only medium tank. So him being there is really good for for this uh, STB one. And now he is going to focus on the Death Star. Of course, if you can focus on the Death Star, go for the Death Star. I don't know now what this Fosh is doing, but the Fosh is actually taking the attention of all the tanks around this area. He does clear uh, the Vickers Light, but he has just lost like literally all of his hit points. Has to be careful. You can see him focusing on the uh, Death Star. Um, so the, yeah, there, there, there goes the Fosh. And the AMX 50B is coming around. But you can see he's just having a look at the Death Star. He's the main target. If he can come up there, that was a, that was a bit of um, a funny shot there. Maybe he should have just uh, been a little bit more patient. And he does actually get the next shell off. So his team are winning. It is a 6 versus 5. The, the heavy tanks are actually holding. They are losing hit points. Um, but they are, they are holding around that area. Now, I don't know where... Did the AMX 50B die? Um, I think he did. I think he did. He's gone. I didn't even. I didn't even notice that. So this might be his opportunity to actually flank around to the Death Star and clear him because you honestly you don't want to get shot from a Death Star in this thing. You're not going to bounce it unless um, it's troll and it shoots your your turret. Then yeah, you're not going to bounce anything um, from the Death Star. I, I think he can even. Well, I'm pretty sure he can even HE the front of you. So be very careful of Death Stars. 
um, you don't want to get shot from them. If you can focus the Death Star, focus the, uh, focus the Death Star, which is exactly what he's going to do. Now, the Death Star has the fire decided to make a move up to help his heavy tanks. Um, he no longer got a shot on the Death Star, but he does get that shot on the Yegaru, bringing him now down to a one shot. Now, you can do 400 plus damage in this tank when you high roll. Uh, so at the minute, he is on 3.7k damage. It is now a four versus four. Um, clearing that Death Star is the main priority he has to clear that death star the death star can pretty much one shot any of the tanks remaining and he can also be one shotted from the death star if it's a he shot there goes the e100 so it is now a three versus four and he's just going to rush in the death star is not looking at him so he's going to take the opportunity to, to get these shots off on the death star uh, he does uh, take a shot from the the left side but he, you can see him just focusing that Death Star, which is the correct decision, a right decision. And now he's going to go for the one-shot mouse. Uh, there is a mouse behind him. Uh, again, he has to be very careful. He is losing hit points. I mean, look at that. You can't pen anything. Um, nice shot there on the track, and it actually does damage as well. So fair play to him. Uh, he's not now on 5.3k damage, and he's just getting himself into a position where he can do things like this. I love doing this. Side-hugging tanks, rocking backwards and forwards. Um, it doesn't look that good. Um, I mean, but if it happens to you and you're trying to aim at that tank that's going backwards and forwards, it's very, very annoying, especially when it is something like an STB that's really, really low to the ground because all that mouse is really going to see is that turret. And when it's moving backwards and forwards, it's a very, very difficult pen. Um, so he's going to ignore the mouse at the moment. He can't get the shot. He is a one shot. So he's just going to ignore the mouse and he's going to go for the IS-7. The, the same target as his Hori, uh, which again is a, a good decision. And he's always trying to focus um, on the on the mouse to see where the mouse is. And he does actually take care of the IS-7 and the Hori takes care of the mouse. So that was actually a really, really good game. Um, but yeah, all in all, Get this tank on a ridgeline. It is a fantastic tank. Um, definitely, definitely worth the grind. But you have to get it on a ridge. Use that amazing turret. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. I'm Midzy69, and I'll catch you soon. Bye-bye.